Hey everybody, John Pop here, and we're at Build Live, and we're gonna have a great session right now talking about JavaScript and some superpowers that you can all have with that. And I've got some great guests here, but before we get to them, if you all have any questions, please use the link below and put your questions into us, and we'll do our best to answer them on anything related to JavaScript or Xamarin, right? Yeah, Xamarin, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, just, just JavaScript. Don't I'm John Pop. Who are you? Uh, I'm Brian Holt, and I work on the Visual Studio Code team as well as JavaScript on Azure. Awesome. Great to have you, Brian. Hi, John Papa. I'm Hi, Matt, Matt Hernandez. <laughs> uh, I am also on the Visual Studio Code team. I'm, on the, uh, I'm the PM for Azure Tools for Visual Studio Code, where we're building extensions for Azure and VS Code. So you get to build all the cool extensions for VS Code. And Brian, you're relatively new to the team, right? Yeah. I, I'm actually quite new. I was a cloud advocate before. Yes, we worked together. Yeah, John was my manager. <laughs> we did, <laughs> with uh, developer relations, developer advocacy, whatever you want to call that kind of job, which is a lot of fun. Yeah. So let's kick things off first and talk about what is the most exciting thing you found so far to build? Uh, the thing that I'm most excited about uh, is the Visual Studio Code and uh, the remote extensions so that you can develop things on containers. Like anything that can run like a little tiny daemon, you can connect to it. You can start developing as if it was local. It'll forward ports for you. So you could have like a big, beefy uh, VM out in the cloud, or you could have you know, just a, something inside a dock or running inside your computer, anything like that. I'm really, really excited about that. So do you develop a lot of times on a container? Is that why you're, you're interested in this? Yeah, I mean, definitely. So if I just have like my little Surface Go, which is a little tiny Windows computer, I can actually have it running Ubuntu or something like that and running my node servers inside of that. And it works really, really well. Is this something, I, I heard it was like the top one, two, or three issues open up on GitHub for a long time in VS Code, right, mm -hmm. for this. So this must be a pretty big thing that you guys were working on for a while. Yeah, we're super excited about it. Uh, it's going to open up a lot of possibilities. And Matt, what's your favorite thing from Build so far? Oh, boy. Uh, the talk we're doing tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're both doing a talk tomorrow. And what's the title of that talk, Matt? Um, Productive front-end development with JavaScript, VS Code, and Azure. It is, but what's the working name that you and I like to talk <laughs> call it? How to build Jamstack apps. Jamstack. What exactly is the Jamstack? Jamstack is a terrible acronym. Isn't it? Do we <laughs> yeah. need more acronyms out there for JavaScript? I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. seriously. Yes. Yeah. So it's uh, JavaScript, APIs, and markup. So it's a really complicated way to say, uh, rich client code, serverless backend, and some layer to connect all the pieces together. So wait, no servers? No servers. No, no servers. servers. It's serverless. Serverless. <laughs> We're done with servers. We're done with servers. Yeah. We've moved beyond servers to jam <laughs> stack. We've transcended. <laughs> <laughs> it's very transcendent. I'm really excited about this session tomorrow, too. Uh, it's going to take advantage of a lot of things that you've built and all of your awesome know-how. If any of you have used VS Code out there, the best extensions, this gentleman over here and his team That's too have much built pressure. that. Uh, so no pressure. <laughs> Tomorrow morning in this session, definitely check it out. If you're not checking it live, you can check it out online and check those too. So when building a Jamstack app, what kind of things, uh, I mean, start with the JavaScript. What kind of things would you do with the JavaScript? So uh, the, big, the big thing that I'm trying to accomplish with Jamstack and, and the tooling in VS Code is how to set this up to run locally. So having an Angular, React, or Vue app connected to functions all running on my local machine uh, with breakpoints, being able to hit my, uh, hit my breakpoints, use the debugger in VS Code, both client and server. Uh, so, so your JavaScript, if I get you here, it could be Angular, React, or Vue. That's the J in the jam, right? Right. And the A from the, J, uh, from the jam stack, the APIs, that's your serverless functions? Right. OK, and then your markup is the M. It, I guess it's the, the templating Is that why Angular. it's not the greatest background <laughs> in the world? <laughs> and I believe there's other uh, technologies that use this, too. It wasn't Gatsby one of the big things that's? For sure. Yeah, Gatsby is a really good example of it. You can build your static website. You can kind of pre-compile it, and then you can just ship it out to a static service and then just have it talk to a serverless backend. It's just a really, really productive way and very scalable and very cheap way to make an application. You know, I'm glad you hit on that, because when I first heard the term Jamstack, it, it really spoke to me, because I was starting to think about, well, I love Node. I know, I know you guys love Node, too. Uh, a lot of our listeners do out here. Why would I bother 
with creating an app that didn't necessarily have a node server? Like, what are the advantages of that? And I think you just hit on one of those. It's really cheap. Really right? cheap. <laughs> like, really, really cheap. Like, how cheap is really, really cheap? Well, I actually just built an app over the weekend. It had 40,000 hits. It, it talked to, to storage and things like that, and it cost me two cents to run. <laughs> two cents. <laughs> two cents. Two cents. Two cents. I'm not making that up. <laughs> I will bring it up right now, and I will show you. It was two cents. That is pretty cool, because the storage is really cheap. Serverless functions, assuming you're doing consumption. Yep. Very cheap as well. Uh, and then really, I guess, unless you have database or something else, based on how much data you store. Yeah, even if you're going to use the, like, the lowest tier of Cosmos, it's still not very much. Uh, that's pretty cool. I like that, because you get the cheapness side of it. But let's say you've got a billion dollars and you don't mind money. Uh, is there any other reasons to use the Jamstack, Matt? Because it's fun. <laughs> All right. Uh, because we like it's to shiny. Do, yeah. <laughs> we like to do new things. Uh, we've built, uh, we node developers, we've built Express servers for years now. And um, now we don't have to. It's just individual files with individual functions. Uh, it's, it's just fun. It feels good. Are you trying to say that node is getting old? Ooh. I, mean, I don't want to say that. <laughs> I, I remember the days when people were saying, you're using Node. That's like way too new. We can't go down that road. Is it proven? Is it solid? Um, and it, it's really not because Jamstack isn't replacing Node so much for anything for Node is. It's more because it's easy. It's fun. We're having a lot of fun tomorrow in the session. <laughs> yeah. And then you can put all these things together in one place in a cost-effective way. Yeah, it's really productive. It's, it's event-driven computing, right? And like, that's most of the things that we're working on. Like, an event happens, I want to do something to it, and then I want to have an output somewhere. Like, that's a really natural model for us to think about building applications with. Yeah, we didn't talk about scaling, though. Like, that's, it, that's one of the scales. other really great benefits. <laughs> Wait, it scales, too? It it's scales. not just a toy? Just right. right. It also does Julian fries. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have any questions about any of this, the Jamstack, or, you know, what Brian's favorite food is, definitely check it out. Put the link in there, and we'll read the questions on air. Uh, what is your favorite food, by the way? Julian Fries. All right, here we go. <laughs> so one of the things I like about the talk tomorrow, that as we were building this, and we, it really is fun, that's where this whole idea came out of, was that the development experience is really important to me, and I know to a lot of the people out there using VS Code. It's why we use it. So if you're building an app with the Jamstack, does it take you 50 steps through the tools to, to deploy the storage and the functions? And is this hard to do? And nope. if not, what do you do? It's, it's actually one of the best parts about VS Code. That's actually what, one of the things that drew me to using VS Code initially, is that it's so easy to get your code, one, scaffold up, like with all the functions and all that kind of stuff kind of hooking together, and then to move that off of your local de developer environment, which is great, into the cloud. Like, that whole process is really, really seamless. And you could do that right inside of VS Code with the extensions. Without ever leaving it, yeah. I like that. So the extensions that you use are the storage extension, mm -hmm. uh, the functions extension. Mm -hmm. I lost my voice. The functions extension, <laughs> both those there. Do you need any others to do this? Uh, there are a couple of others that will make it a little more fun, like the Cosmos extension if you're using a Cosmos database, or even just a Mongo database running somewhere, anywhere. Um, yeah, that's it. Function you, storage Cosmos. And we also, uh, you can get those from an extension pack, I believe. What's the name of that one, Matt? Azure, Azure Tools? Azure, Azure, Azure tool. Tools? Azure Tools. They renamed it at one point. Yeah. Yeah. You renamed it at one point. Yeah. Uh, it's but you can get that. Tools. It's a one-stop shop. An extension pack, if you haven't used it before, is a great way to like, basically just bundle a bunch of those things together right. so you can and, get them all in one shop. And if you're doing one of those Express servers, uh, app services in there as well, which is our PaaS. Right. Perfect. We have a question uh, online from uh, Alfred Myers. Thanks, Alfred. So he wants to know, how big is the Jamstack? And who's behind us and who's using it out there? Because a lot of times, think about the Node days we were just talking about. If you're building a Node app, years ago, people were like, who else is using Node? Who else is using the Jamstack? Who, what's it good for? It's getting bigger, for sure. Like, any place that you're using, like, WordPress today could be a Jamstack application. And I think that's kind of, like, melting a lot of people's minds because WordPress is everywhere, right? And it certainly it, is. And it definitely has its place. I'm not trying to... Uh, uh, take them down a peg or anything like that. But it, it's very productive for a certain group of people. And I'm seeing a lot of these new startups coming online. A lot of companies that you probably have heard of that, uh, I'm not going to tell you which companies they are, but let's just say a lot of, uh, 
new startups are using this Jamstack because it's very, very cost effective, right? And it's very fast to, to get up and running and be productive. Yeah, and I think we should really harp on the cost effective for a moment because you mentioned scale. I've worked at a lot of places where we have like 7, 10, 20 instances of servers out there. And when you have all these servers, even small costs get amplified, right, when you're scaling these things up. Uh, with the Jamstack, if you're running two cents and you run that 10 times, you're up to almost a quarter. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a gumball. You could have gotten a gumball with that. You, you eat a lot of gum? No. No. <laughs> I wonder where you're doing your shopping from. So you've you're got a lot of mind on food today. Yeah, I'm hungry. It's, it's about that time. <laughs> it is. OK. Is gum a food? That's like one of those questions you like, like wake up in the middle of the night and is like, is gum a food? <laughs> I think it is. I think it is one of those questions. I'll be thinking about that all night tonight now. Yeah. No, I think part of the question that Alfred, and thank you for asking the question, was also getting at was um, not only who you're using, because you, you don't want to be one of those people who's using something that's experimental and isn't tried and true. I think the name, like when I first heard it, kind of makes it sound like, what is that? Like yet another thing? But it really, put that aside, and it's really about storage, which has been around forever. Yep. You know? Uh, and then you've also got your functions, which has been around for a couple of years, the serverless APIs idea, and markup, which has, again, been around. So you're basically simplifying that. But let me ask you this. The front-end development community, there's a lot of developers out there who just do front-end development, mm -hmm. Angular, React, Vue, Ember, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's like the niche for them now, for them to go after building applications? Yeah. I think it's a, it's a, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that we try to do in the talk tomorrow is use the same language. So I, I know we said JavaScript, but I'm actually doing Angular, so it's TypeScript. Uh, so I did TypeScript functions. And I think that's one of those big pieces that kind of keeps it cohesive. But the, um, I, I kind of peeked at the next question. So I'm going to half answer that question. Uh, it's really just a spa app with a back end. All right, right, so what's a spa? Let's define spa. So a single page app. Single page app. So Vue, React, Angular uh, with the serverless backend. And it's just, it makes it nice and simple. Like I said earlier, it's a single file for a route. So it's really easy to migrate to. It's really easy to migrate from if it doesn't work out as well. So in, in this question, as you were getting ahead there, James asked us, how is Jamstack different from spas? The way I look at it, you tell me how you feel, is the Jamstack is really a superset of a SPA. Agreed. Like yep. the JavaScript. Let's mm -hmm. say we're doing React. You know, you're, you're a really big React guy. Mm -hmm. I was going to say you're in love with it, but I don't think you're in love with it. <laughs> you do a lot of React. I do a lot of React. And he's very well known for it. Uh, so that's your SPA in the Jamstack, but you need something else. Mm -hmm. You can't just have an app that shows nothing. You need data from somewhere, right? Right, right. And that's where the APIs fit in. Yeah, and spas can be, or sorry, Jamstack can be more than just a serverless backend, right? You could have an express app that's a part of that. It's more like services, right? And so you can have, you know, functions on Azure Functions be your services, but that could also be a, an Elixir server or a PHP server, and that can just be various different pieces of your APIs. API can mean any number of things. We're just, har we're just talking about serverless because it's really easy and cheap. But as your company grows, you can kind of expand out, and you don't have to migrate wholesale at, at any point, right? You just kind of replace pieces in your infrastructure so it, it grows up with you really well. Yeah, it doesn't even have to be your API either, like using GitHub's API, that kind of thing, if you're Definitely. reading data from, from public repos, that kind of stuff. That's a great point. The API is like, if they're yours, they could be like serverless functions. That's what we're showing tomorrow. But they could be any third-party API or, or multiple sets right. of APIs that you're building in. But I think I really know the answer to James's question. The reason it's called Jamstack is because if you, you replace the J with spa, it would really be the spam stack. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and I don't think anybody wants to call it that. Yep. No. I, I think right. it sounds way cooler there. than Jamstack. But. No? <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're going back to Jamstack. Is that all right with you? Yep. Fine. All right. This is much better. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we've, we've got the Jamstack and that's where it's building, when you're building these things inside of VS Code, like, what's the, what's the debug experience look like? Hey, great question, John. Uh, so VS Code has some really powerful configuration for debug, uh, launching specific types of debuggers. So uh, the Chrome tools, the new Edge browser tools, and uh, the serverless function backend piece. 
And of course, you can make compound launch configs. So you can go, you can debug both things at the same time inside yep. VS Code. Right. So at that point, you just cram them in together into an array, hit F5, and everything starts up. Hey, it's great to talk to you guys today about the Jam Stack, not the Spam Stack, <laughs> and all the cool stuff you can do in VS Code. Matt, Brian, thanks for coming on, and thank you all for watching Build Live. Thanks, John Papa. Thanks. Good job.